Hi, I'm Dr. Dina Silvestri, and we're here today to present at the Virginia Counselors Association on Animal Assisted Therapy and Trauma. We are presenting to a group of therapists. My name is Adina Silvestri. This is Bunny Young. This is Goose. And we're here today to talk about Animal Assisted Therapy for Trauma. Definitions of trauma. That it's a unique individual experience of a single event um, or events or a set of enduring conditions in which the individual's ability to integrate his or her emotional experience is overwhelmed. Um, so the ability to stay present is very difficult. The individual experience is subjective. So threat to life, bodily integrity or sanity. Um, you know, so I'm falling to pieces might be something that our clients say or I feel, I feel insane. So in looking at trauma again, um, we don't define trauma, or at least the definition that we use is we don't define trauma as an event magnitude. Children also experience trauma uh, very differently, however, than adults. Um, they're physically dependent on adults for survival, so of course their threshold for trauma is very, is very different. Um, right, so it's that like feeling of attachment is, is the child attaching at an early age. So, you know, something very small can affect a child, um, whereas something, same thing that would affect a child would have a very different effect on a 30-year-old adult, right? Um, you, you'd have to have a lot, a pretty significant event to affect a 30-year-old adult. Um, okay, so a few, a few uh, ways that that could occur is when a child is frightened, um, maybe dad is, um, is very nasty, you know, threatening, I will kill you, um, is maybe a message that the child's receiving. Maybe the child was never hit, but that message was good enough. I mean, the child doesn't know, right? So it just sort of carries on with them. Um, neglect, separation. Um, I think what we've learned is that if you don't ask the questions, then you really don't know, you know? So really having to dig a little further into the childhood um, you know, were you separated from parents? Um, was there an emotional abandonment there? Um, physical abandonment, right? So all those things play a part in trauma. Exposure to DV, if little Johnny was exposed to DV, domestic violence, every single day, maybe he, he didn't get hit or abused, but that's still significant, right? Witnessing violence. Okay, we talked about, yeah, if I'll kill you, Accidents, medical crisis, surgery, invasive procedures, uh, death of a parent or sibling, also traumatic. Um, so, I think this is mine. I have, a, <laughs> I have a client, and we'll call her Cece, um, and she had um, several medical issues um, as a child. She actually flatlined when she was young, maybe like about three. Um, so several, you know, invasive procedures. Uh, the body remembers that, right? Um, so fast forward 20 years later, uh, she comes to the office um, for anxiety, um, depression. So these symptoms are carrying on, right? They're telling the story. She has to go to the hospital again. With a, with a co not, yeah, a coworker that she was working with. The coworker broke her arm, um, so Cece took her to the hospital. I receive a call from Cece um, saying she's at the hospital and she is overwhelmed. She's, um, so she's having these, uh, these symptoms, right? So instead of being there for the coworker who's broken the arm, really we needed to be there for Cece because she was, she was being triggered. I was just going to... An example there of how that manifests. So trauma survivors have symptoms instead of memories. Uh, the symptoms tell a story. What does that mean to you guys? The brain may not logically know what's going on, but the body has the symptoms that, that are disconnected from helping you to tease out those stories. Yeah, 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 definitely. Um, you know, Memories aren't always captured in the, in the left brain, right? So memories are sort of captured all over the brain. And so there's not always a narrative to go along with that. So um, something that I always try to remember is listen to the symptoms. You know, if you listen to the symptoms, you can't go wrong. 
um, because that's, that's what's going to tell you the, the story. So let's talk a little about implicit memory here. So under conditions of extreme stress, there's a failure of memory processing that results in an ability to integrate incoming input, like you said, into an autobiographical auto narrative, leaving the sensory elements of the experienced unintegrated and unattached, kind of floating around there. Um, so the sensory elements are prone to return, and they're activated by current reminders. There's another client, we'll call, we'll call her Anne, um, and Anne had, um, she was kidnapped at a young age um, and thrown into a porn ring. She remembers being watched as a young child during this pornography ring. Um, and so she has a job. She's, you know, easing into things. She has a job as a tutor. And, you know, whenever Anne realizes that the tutor, the tutee, <laughs> is coming, with uh, the family because the, two, the young boy brings his mom and his grandmother. It's coming with the family. Um, she has this impending fear, this impending doom, and she says, to, you know, she says to her counselor, I'm going to die. You know, I am going to be killed by these people. I am going to die. Right? So it's that implicit memory that's, um, that's being triggered again. So memory without words, right? It's living, living in the past. Um, Okay, so these implicit memories are prone to return and they're activated by current reminders, the reminders of being watched by those individuals. Brain scan research it says traumatic memories are encoded primarily as bodily and emotional responses without words or pictures. So again, detached from the events um, because there's a simultaneous decrease in activity in the parts of the brain responsible for memory and language. <laughs> so divorce from original context and happening um, now, these implicit memories do not convey that internal sensation that something's being recalled. So there's, there's no recall. Um, we act, we feel, we imagine, um, you know, that those past experiences are, are our present reality. All right. Triggers and triggering. Human body is self-protective. It automatically, automatically reacts to any cue, indicating the possibility of danger. So this is interesting, too. You know, we have some clients that come in, and they say, you know, I can't, I'm going to be triggered on this day, on this event, maybe Halloween or Christmas. Um, maybe that they were beaten Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday by dad um, when they were young. So then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, how are they feeling? Yeah, they're feeling triggered. Right. So the brain's bias to respond to any danger signal it has known before. Right. So times of days, days of week, times of years, gender, age, facial expression, colors, smells, sounds, weather conditions, tone, voice, body language, touch, even our own emotions and body sensations. When we get triggered, we experience sudden and overwhelming feelings, sensations, and impulses that convey, I am in danger right now. I mean, when, when the clients come to you um, and they're in a panic, um, you know, they're feeling those sensations right then and there, correct? Right, so it's sort of um, that disassociation between the past and the present. So I stuck a slide in here about PTSD. Um, you know, I think a hallmark of PTSD is remembering the trauma However, I don't think that a lot of our guys can do that. I don't think that they always remember the trauma. Um, like we had mentioned before, you know, it's sometimes it's memory without words, right? It's, it's the sensations, um, the symptoms. Um, so they get kind of freaked out. They get, you know, you'll hear kind of a common theme, like I'm feeling overwhelmed, I'm feeling stressed. Um, so then I say, you know, getting the, the real story is an issue. Um, Therapists believe language is everything, is it? Trauma is a story that happened a long time ago. Um, so it's really, it's, it's difficult to kind of get them to understand, you know, that these thoughts are just thought memories. Um, you know, that story is over. Um, that trauma that kept you behaving, um, you know, as a three-year-old that had been beaten, you know, now that you're 30 and 40, you sometimes you just walk around now, right, as a three-year-old that was beaten and shamed. You, you still have that body of a three-year-old. 
So emotional memory converts that past in an expectation of the future, makes the worst experiences in our past persist as felt realities. I like that from Eckert. So I felt that it went pretty good today. Um, I felt that everybody in the audience was engaged. I thought it was successful. <laughs>